The Cube presents HPE Discover 2022. Brought to you by HPE. Hi everybody, Dave Vellante and John Furrier wrapping up theCUBE's coverage of day two, HPE Discover 2022. We're live from Las Vegas. Vishal Lal is here, he's the Senior Vice President and General Manager for HPE's GreenLake Cloud Services Solutions. Vishal, good to see you again. Likewise, Dave, good to see you. It was about a year ago <laughs> that we met here, or maybe yeah, nine yeah, months ago. Yeah, 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 right, yeah that's right. Then, right? Uh, yeah. September of last year. Right. New role for you, is that right? Uh, I was starting that new role when I last yeah. met you. Yeah, but it's been nine months, three quarters now. Well, what, do you, what have you learned so far? <laughs> I mean, uh, it's been uh, quite a ride, right? I mean, when I was starting off, I had you know, th about three priorities. We've executed on, on all of them. So, I mean, if you remember back then, Dave, we talked about you know, improving a cloud experience. We talked about data and analytics being a focus area, and then building out the marketplace. I think you heard a lot of that over the last couple of days here, right? So we've uh, enhanced our cloud experience, we added a private cloud, which was the big announcement yesterday, or day before yesterday yep. that Antonio made. So that's been, I mean, we've been testing that with customers, great feedback so far, right? And we're super excited about that. And uh, you know, at, uh, down there, the test drive session, people are testing that. So we're getting really, really good feedback, really good acceptance from customers. On the data and analytics side, we, you know, we launched the S3 con connector. We also had uh, the analytics platform, and then we launched Data Fabric as a service a couple of days ago, right? Which is kind of like back into that hybrid world. And then on the marketplace side, we've added a ton of partners, gone deep with them, about 80 plus partners now, different ISVs. So again, I think um, uh, great, uh, I think we've, we've accomplished a lot over the last uh, three quarters or so. A lot more to be done though. The marketplace is really interesting to yeah. us because it's a hallmark of cloud. You got to have a marketplace. Correct. Talk about how that's evolving and what your vision is for marketplace. Yeah. I mean, you're exactly right. I mean, having a broad marketplace provides a pull for the platform, right? It's a chicken and egg, you need both. You need a good platform on yeah. which a good marketplace can sit, but the vice versa as well. And what we are doing two things there, right? One is we're expanding the yeah. coverage of the marketplace, so we are adding more ISVs into the marketplace, but at the same time, we're adding more capabilities into the marketplace. So for example, we just demoed earlier today click to deploy capabilities, right? So uh, we have an ISV in the marketplace, they're tested, they, are, uh, they work with the solution, but now you can, you can click to deploy directly on our infrastructure. Over time, we'll add commerce capabilities, licensing capabilities, et cetera, but again, we are super excited about that capability because I think it's important from a customer perspective. Michelle, I want to ask you about that because that's, again, the marketplace will be the, the ultimate uh, arbiter of value creation. Correct. Ecosystem and marketplace go hand in hand. Right. What's your vision for what a successful ecosystem looks like? What's your expectation? Because now that GreenLake is up and running, I say up and running, but like we've been following the announcement. Yeah. It just gets better, it's up and to the right. Correct. So we're anticipating an ecosystem surge. Yeah. What are you expecting and what's your vision for how the ecosystem's going to develop out? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been meeting with a lot of our partners over the last couple of days, and you're right, right? I mean, uh, I think of them in three or four buckets, right? They're ISVs. And the ISVs come in two, sh two forms, right? They are bigger solutions, right? Like think of Veeam, Nutanix, right? Uh, Commvault, uh, think, you know, big, bigger solutions. And then there are smaller uh, software packages, right? Think Mongo, think about open source, right? So again, one of them is targeted to developers, the other to the IT ops, but that's kind of one bucket, right, ISVs. Uh, the second is around the channel partners who take this to market, and they're asking us, hey, this is fantastic, help us understand how we can help you take this to market. And I think the other bucket is SIs, system integrators, right? Mm -hmm. I met with a few today, and they're all excited about, they're like, hey, we have some tooling, we have the managed services capabilities, how can we take your cloud? Because they've built great practice around Accenture, around, sorry, AWS, around um, uh, Azure, so they're like, how can we build a similar practice around GreenLake? So again, those are the big buckets, yeah. I would say. Yeah, yeah, that's a great answer, great yeah. commentary. I want to just follow up on that real quick, if you don't mind. So a couple things we're seeing and observing, I want to get your reaction to is, yeah. with AI and machine learning and the promise of that, vertical specialization is creating unique opportunities on with these cloud, cloud platforms. Yeah. And the other one is the rise of the managed service provider, because Correct. expertise are hard to come by. Yeah. You want Kubernetes? Good luck finding talent. Yeah. So managed services seem to be exploding. How does that fit into the buckets, or is it all three buckets, or do you guys enable that? How do you see yeah. that coming, and then the vertical piece? So really good question. What we are doing is, through our software, we are trying to abstract a lot of the complexity away, take Kubernetes, right? So we are actually off, we have actually automated a whole bunch of Kubernetes functionality in our software. And then we provide managed services around it, with very little, 
I would say human labor associated with it is, is software managed. But at the same time, we are, uh, what we are trying to do is make sure that we enable that same functionality to our partners. So a lot of it is software automation, but then they can wrap their services around it, and that way we can scale the business, right? So again, our first principle is automate as much as we can yep. through software, right? Abstract complexity, and then as needed, uh, uh, add the managed services capabilities so around it. So get some functionality for HPE to have it, and then encourage the ecosystem to fill it in, or replicate it. Or replicate it, right? I mean, I don't think it's either or, yep. it should be both, right? We can provide managed services, or we should have our uh, our partners provide managed services. That's how we scale the business. We are, end of the day, yeah. we are a product and product company, right? And it can manifest itself in services as customers consume it, but it's still IP based. Yeah. So right. let's quantify you know, some of that momentum. I think in the last earnings call, you're over $800 million now in ARR. You got a, you're growing at triple digits. Yeah. Uh, you got a big backlog, I forget yeah. the exact number. Um, give us some Yeah, I mean, the share. momentum is fantastic, Dave, right? So, we have about $7 billion in total contract yeah, value, sure right, significant. Uh, we have 1,600 customers now, unique customers, uh, running GreenLake. We have, um, you're right, triple digit, triple digit growth year over year. So uh, last quarter we had 100% growth uh, year over year. So again, fantastic momentum. I mean, the other couple, like one other metric I would like to talk about is the, um, the stickiness factor associated retention, with Retention, NRR, or how do you it's, measure it's that? It's retention, right, it's renewals. It's running in like high 90s, right? So if you think about it, that's a reflection of the value proposition of GreenLake, right? That, and that's, that's kind of on a unit basis, if you will? That's a number? Oh, number. On the revenue basis, yeah. On a revenue basis, yeah. okay. Got and it. of the 1,600 customers, can you talk about the size? I mean, obviously, big numbers must be large companies that are... They're uh, both, right? So are, I'll give you some examples, right? So. I mean, they're large companies. They come from different industries, different geographies. We are seeing like the momentum across every single geo, every single industry. I mean, just to take some examples, BMW, for example. Uh, I mean, they're running the entire electric, electric car fleet data collection on Data Fabric on GreenLake, right? Texas Children Health on the on the healthcare side, right? Uh, on the public sector side, I was with um, uh, with uh, Carl Hunt yesterday. He's the CIO of County of Essex, New Jersey. So they are running the entire operations on GreenLake. So just if you look at it, Barclays is the financial sector, right? I mean, they're running 100,000 workloads on GreenLake. So if you just look at the scale, large companies, small com companies, public sector. In India, we have Steel Authority of India, which is the largest uh, steel producer there. So, you know, we're seeing it across multiple industries, multiple geographies, great, uh, great uptake. Yeah, we were talking yesterday on our wrap up, kind of dissecting through the news. Yeah. I want to ask you the question that we were riffing on and see if we can get some clarity on it. If I'm a customer, CIO or CISO or buyer, yeah. or HPE, I've been working with you or uh, your your team for, for years. What's the value proposition? Finish this sentence. I work with HPE because blank. Because GreenLake brings new value proposition. What is that, fill in that blank for me. Yeah, so I mean as uh, we uh, talk with us, speak with our customers, customers are looking at alternatives at all times, right? Sometimes it's other providers on premises, sometimes it's public cloud. And uh, as we look at it, uh, I mean we have value propositions across both, right? So from a, public cloud perspective, some of the challenges that our customers see are around latency, around uh, cost predictability, right? That variability in cost is really kind of like uh, a challenge. It's around compliance, right? Uh, things of that nature. It's around open systems, right? I mean, sometimes, you know, they feel locked into a cloud provider, especially when they're using proprietary services. So those are some of the things that we have solved for them. Uh, as compared to kind of like, you know, the other on-premises vendors, I would say the marketplace that we spoke about earlier is a huge differentiator. We have this huge marketplace now that's developing. Uh, we have high levels of automation that we have built, right, which is, uh, a, you know, which tells you about the TCO that we can drive for the customers. Yeah. What, the other thing that is really cool that we um, introduced in the public, in the private cloud, is fungibility across infrastructure, right? So basically on the same infrastructure you can run, um, virtual machines, containers, bare metals, any application you want. So you can decommission and commission the infrastructure on the fly. So what it does is increase. No matter where it is? Uh, no, in the on, same, on, on premise. On premise, okay, the same on part, premise, right? Okay. Yeah, but earlier, I mean, if you think about it, the infrastructure was dedicated for a certain application. Yeah. Now we have basically, we have yeah, basically yeah. made it composable, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. that way, what really uh, that does is increases utilization. So you can get enough increased utilization, high automation with drives, lower TCO. For so you've got a horizontal, basically platform now that Correct. can handle a, a variety of workloads. Yeah, and, they, and these workloads can sit anywhere to your point, right? I mean, we can have uh, a four node workload out in a manufacturing setting. 
to multiple racks in a data center. And it's all run by the same cloud trains, same software train, so it's really extensive. And you can call on the resources that you need for that particular workload exactly whenever right. you need them. Exactly right. Excellent. Um, give you the last word, kind of takeaways from Discover, and, and we're, when, we talk, when we sit down and talk next year at, the, <laughs> at this event, where do you want to be? I mean, you know, I think as you probably saw from Discover, this is like very different. Antonio did a live demo of our product, right? Uh, which, was, yeah, yeah. which was cool, right? I mean, we haven't Very done cool. that in a while. Yeah. So, I mean, you started... It didn't, it didn't die like Bill Gates' <laughs> demos, man. No, no, no. <laughs> so, I think, um, uh, so, I think you'll see more of that from us. I mean, I'm focused on three things, right? I'm focused on that cloud experience we spoke about. So, what we are doing now is making sure that we increase the TAM for that, uh, make it very, you know, um, attractive to dif different industries through certifications like HIPAA, et cetera. So that's kind of one focus, right? Just drive harder at that uh, adoption of that, of, of that private cloud, right, across different industries and different customer segments. The second is uh, more on the data and analytics I spoke about. So we'll have more and more analytics capabilities that you'll see um, building upon data fabric as a service. And the third is the marketplace. So that's like, it's very yeah. specific. It's the three focus areas yeah. and we are driving hard. All right, we'll be watching number, for that. Number two, instrumentation is really yeah. key. And, it is absolutely key. And the marketplace too. I mean, yeah. you, you mentioned you know, Mongo, some other data platforms yeah. that we're going to see here. That's going to be, I think, critical for monetization on, the, on, on GreenLake. Absolutely. Yeah. Michelle Lau, thanks so much for coming back in theCUBE. Great. Thank you. Good to Great see, to see you. you. Thanks for coming Thank on. You. All right, keep it right there. We'll be, John and I will be back up to wrap up the day with, with a, a couple of heavies from IDC. You're watching theCUBE.